So I'm coming to you today live from the ball pit. I thought what better place to film this video uh, that where I'm going to talk about touch than from a ball pit. Uh, so anyway, my name is Cindy Epsinger and I'm an occupational therapist, uh, mother of two, and author of the book Why Is My Kid Doing That? So I've been wanting to answer some of your questions lately as to why is my kid blank? And one of the questions that comes up a lot is in regards to touch. Why is my kid touching everything, hitting his brother or sister, um, constantly touching their brother or sister? Or the opposite is true too. Why won't my kid get their hands dirty? Why don't they like to, um, you know, touch, touch messy things? So I want to talk, I want to, try to help answer those questions and give you some insight and some tools that you can do to help your child in any of those situations. So first I want to explain, if, if you followed me or, or read any of my stuff, you know that I loosely compare the, a child's sensory system to coffee cups. So again, this is a very simplified explanation, but if you're a coffee drinker, you'll get this. But if um, you know how you might be in the morning prior to that first cup of coffee, somebody, your boss throws um, a big pile of work at you and there's no way it's going to get done. You're not ready to focus. You're not at your optimum level of arousal. In fact, you're, you're hypo aroused. You're, you're under aroused. Um, now the reverse can also be true where you have too much coffee, your heart starts beating fast, you're kind of crawling out of your own skin. Uh, and in that case, you're not able to focus either. You're hyper aroused. You've had too much. So our kids can be the same way. They have had, they can be in that situation where they've had too little. They don't, they haven't had enough to fill their cup, so they're seeking it out. That is the child who touches everything. They ha haven't filled that cup up. So in, in an effort to get that, they're gonna they're gonna walk along, touch the walls, touch their shirt, twirl their hair, um, just touch anything and everything. They're filling their cup. And that's okay. They're showing us what they need. It's our job to play detective and say, hmm, oh, okay, I see my child needs more touch. And either allow them to continue on, or if they're doing it in, in inappropriate ways, find appropriate ways for them to get that. So we want to fill their day and their life with so many opportunities to get lots of good touch input, uh, exposing them to all kinds of different textures um, throughout their day when possible. Now, on the other hand, we have the children who they get too much. They've had too much touch input and they might act out because of that. Their, they, their cup is too full and it didn't take much to completely overflow that cup. They don't want to have their hand held. They don't necessarily want hugs or to have their hair played with. They don't want to be touched. Now, what can happen with these kids that I've seen in my practice is that um, some of these kids can really act out in school and they're not bad kids. They just don't know what's going on. But if you think about the school day and how many, how often they're exposed to some sort of unexpected light touch, the kid's knee in circle time rubbing up against yours, the teacher coming up behind you and, and patting you on the back or just you know touching your shoulder, um, the kid behind you in line just bumping their arm up against you. Believe it or not, that can feel very noxious to some of our kids. And it can keep them in what is called fight, fright, or flight mode, which is the same um, it, it activates that part of the nervous system and that same part of the nervous system that makes us react when we see the blue lights flashing in our rearview mirror or a spider crawling on our leg or we touch a hot stove or we might panic, right? Our heart starts beating fast, we start breathing heavy, we start sweating, we're high alert. That can happen to these kids all regarding touch. And they might act out in inappropriate ways because they don't know what's going on, or they might feel really anxious. They don't know when that next unexpected touch is gonna happen, and there's anxiety because of it, and that leads to un un undesirable, undesirable behaviors oftentimes. So what do we wanna do with those kids? 
we don't want to eliminate all touch. We want to continue to expose them to touch and different textures and different opportunities to get their hands dirty. We just want to do it in a way where they, they are in control and they feel really safe with it because the last thing we want to do is keep them in fight, fight, or flight mode. Now, as far as the kids who are hitting, always wanting to hug their, their brother or sister, um, a little more aggressive with their touch, that can certainly be because they're craving touch. So again, we need to give them more opportunities for touch. Maybe we ourselves need to give them as many hugs as we can. Um, it can also be because they are, <clears throat> it can be more because they're, they need that deep touch. They're really seeking out, not, I mean not deep touch, they're seeking out deep pressure, heavy work. They're seeking out proprioception more than they're seeking out tactile input. So if they're seeking out proprioception with that real kind of aggressive hitting, they're aggressive, they're wrestling, they're, you know, always um, tackling their brother or sister or needing those really big hugs. So they're craving proprioception. So what we want to do then is give them lots of opportunities for that heavy work, deep pressure input, running, jumping, climbing, um, pushing, pulling, wrestling, hugs. Uh, I love to do pillow sandwiches with my kids. I'll do my kid, a pillow on top, and then I'll gently lay on that pillow on top of them to really give them that deep pressure. So again, we get to kind of play detective and see, are they seeking out the touch or are they seeking out the heavy work? Um, but either way, you know you need to just keep their coffee cup isn't filled and you need to keep giving them opportunities for more and more sensory input to fill, to fill that cup. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'd love to answer more questions. Please feel free to leave a comment or a question. Um, if, you, if you have any whys that I can help answer for you that, that deal with the sensory system, I'd love to try to do that. Um, there's also a link to my blog where I uh, go into a little more detail with this. And within that blog, I have opportunities for what you can do to work tactile input. Um, in fun ways into your child's day. Um, feel free to like this, um, subscribe please, so then you'll know when I have another video coming out. Um, but again, I, I hope this helped and, and I'd love to hear